Well, let's start right away with finding the surface area of a regular pyramid. We have an equation on the left. Surface area equals capital B. Well, that capital B is the area of the base. Well, this is easy because it's a square, an 80 by 80 millimeter base, plus one half PL. Um, well, that's a little different. The P is perimeter and the L is slant height. So we just need to briefly look at that. We've got four congruent equilateral triangles and this measurement right here, the 10, that's what I'm looking at here. That is the slant height of this particular pyramid, which happens to be the altitude of the triangle if I look at it in a plane. So let's expand this. I'll explode this diagram and we'll solve it with a net. Well, now that we've seen this figure in 3D, let's flatten this oblique drawing out into a net. And we're going to work out the total surface area. And we'll do it in an intuitive way. And we'll see how those formulae work out. And so again, if I separate, I move like this. And I add the two triangles that are invisible in the background. I can now see that what I've got there, I've got this figure turned into a net. And, well, the distance here would be the perimeter. And I know that the area of a triangle, surface area, is equal to the base plus one half times perimeter times the slant height. Now we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. But let me throw that out and replace it with this, one half base times slant height. Because remember, this was the slant height. I folded the triangle flat and it becomes the altitude of the triangle. Makes sense to me. So let's um, do a little substitution there. And then I, we're just about there. Um, the eight squared, that's the um, area of the base and the four triangles, we can figure them out there. Again, we could find the area of one triangle multiplied by four, but by taking the perimeter, we're just doing them all at once. And our surface area, work it all out, and that 224 square centimeters. Well, here we'll stop once we find the area of just one of the four triangular faces on this regular square pyramid, exercise number five. And, well, and clearly, we're given, and see, a 21 here. Um, that's the height of the pyramid, though, and we need the slant height, obviously. So we're going to do something about that. We're going to look at this triangle on the inside and imagine that triangle right there. Now, I know that this distance is 20 because it happens to be the apothem of the square. So that gives me the other leg. And obviously we have a right triangle that we can solve. You can use the Pythagorean theorem, or if you actually know your triples, I know I don't, the slant height turns out to be 29 feet. The slant height is the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is formed again with the apothem down here and the altitude of the pyramid. So now let's have a look at this one, this one face, we're going to fold it up this way like this, Wah! like that. Let's do that again, that was fine. That's, well, that's just the triangle. We'll just find the area of that triangle. Um, I'll clear up this image right here. We know the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and we'll just substitute. We have a base of 40 and a height of 29, and well, that'll work out to 580 square feet for one of the lateral faces. Well, here we go with a sketch that we've started. We've got a regular hexagon for a base, and we're, and we're going to make it into a hexagonal pyramid. And you can see that blue triangle on the base of that right, or that right triangle, it's a 30, 60, 90, showing us a relationship between radius and apothem. We're going to need that later. And let's turn it this way. So I'm going to draw a triangle here. I've already got this altitude marked out. And I'm going to draw this really so that one of the legs of this right triangle is a is the apothem 
the other is the altitude of the pyramid. And now the hypotenuse of this triangle, this triangle which is incidentally on the inside of the figure, that is the slant height. All right, so if I look at it, it kind of looks like a sundial. Look at that. And again, that's to the middle of one of the sides, the slant height. You say slant height, well, that's different from this, which is on a lateral edge. All of these are lateral edges. And if I draw them out like this, I could make another pretty figure here and just maybe color up some of those signs as well. And let me have a look at how that is coming out. So you see, I've got this figure on the inside. And I could keep this up a little bit more, just connect the vertices. And what I've got now is a pyramid. So you, that triangle on the inside helps us see the relationship. See, that is my slant height. This is going to be an easy exercise, so we just need to find the area of this hexagon. And then we'll work with that and the given slant heights, and we'll find the total area of this figure. Let's make a net. Well, let's take a net view of our solid now, and we see the hexagon down here with sides of six, and we see the six isosceles triangles. The slant height of the figure was nine centimeters, and of course that translates into the altitude or height of the, of the triangles when they're flattened in the net mode. I could represent the net like this, or I can move it like this. I mean, bend it all up like that. Either representation works. I'm going to go with this one. Gives me more room on the page here. And I could represent the perimeter as the 36 centimeters around that polygon. When I straighten out the figure, this is the perimeter right there. Okay. Um, only thing left is to focus on this triangle. Now, that triangle, which we all know and love, has got the apothem, it's got the radius, and this is what I would call the half side. I usually use the variable b, but we know this is, is um, our three centimeters, and well, let's fill in some of the blanks there. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the identity and the, the sides are in the ratio of 1, 2, radical 3. This is 3 centimeters, it's half a side, so this is 3 radical 3 centimeters for the apothem. All right, so we didn't, you could use trig if you forgot that, but I guess we didn't have to. So I could figure out the area of the pieces separately. The base, which is of course a regular hexagon, is 1 half apothem times perimeter, and that would be the area of this base, and the lateral area which is in the purple, is simply the area of these six triangles. I could say one half times, or I, one half base times height six times, or one half perimeter times that slant height. In either event, we're going to combine these all. I'm going to, well, let me simplify the expression for the base right here. Half 36 is 18, 18 times three is 54. 54 radical three square centimeters. And now, um, let's put it all together. Just a reminder, surface area is area of the base, that's capital B, plus one-half perimeter times the slant height. That's this part of the expression over here. And I guess we can um, just substitute the base right here, 54 radical 3, and one-half times 36 times 9. And let's see, a little bit of arithmetic. And at this point, we can break out the calculator, and let's approximate that. In our heads, we know radical 3 is about 1.7, but we'll, you can do this with, uh, expand this with your calculator and get a decimal we'll round to the nearest tenth, and it looks like about 255 and, and a half square centimeters. And there you go, surface area of a regular hexagonal pyramid.